My name is Carlos Tan. So today we are going to uh, work on this uh, experiment which is on the insect zoo. So in this insect zoo, we can actually look for the common pests and uh, possible biological control for our planting, for our vegetable. So as you can see at the back, we have uh, some sawi and also bayam for this practical. So what you need for the insect zoo is basically an uh, empty container. It can be this kind of container, it can be this kind of container, it can be any smaller size. All right. So the importance of doing this insect zoo is because we want to find out whether the insect is a pest or a non-pest or a beneficial insect to our plant. So insect is uh, separate into a very big group. So some, not all the insects are pests to our vegetable. It's all depending on what kind of vegetable you are planting and what kind of plant you are having. So some of the insects are actually uh, predators and uh, biological control or beneficial to our plants. So we don't want to kill all our insects and, and mistaken all the insects as our enemy. So therefore, this is uh, the importance of doing this insect zoo. It can be done by anyone, any garden, any place, or farmers, or home garden, or even for fun, for children learning, everything. Anybody can do this, all right? This is to understand better of our uh, agroecology and also to, uh, to, to understand that not all insects are bad insects. There is good insect. Alright, so now I'm going to show you uh, how to actually do all these things. Okay, so as you can see in my hand, I have uh, this uh, container which is empty. So what we are going to do is every day, you are supposed to come and investigate your home garden, your farm, or your planting area. So by how to investigate is we can randomly choose 20 plant, 30 plant, or 10 plant, depending on uh, how much time do you have during the weekends or during the day. Then we can also do it in a way that uh, morning, afternoon, or evening. Then we can also, besides that, we can also do like different season, like raining season, and dry season. All of these uh, different seasons and uh, different time, we have a uh, different pest and insect will visit our field. And also the practice of different time of watering will also affect all this insect uh, behavior. So uh, it's important to note down uh, when do you collect this insect and, and what and how they feed on. Because in uh, insect, they have a, usually we have a sucking mandible and also the chewing mandible. Chewing mandible is the one that will create holes on your leaves and sucking usually create a dry spot. Okay, some of the sucking mandible inside carries viruses and that will cause your plant to build uh, without knowing, without seeing any inside your plant suddenly will is because of the virus. Alright, so uh, basically you just go through the plants and then you collect the insect with the leaves and then you put into the container. All right. Before you put into the container, you have to note the holes on the plants, so that uh, so that you know that whether the insect is feeding on the leaves or they are not feeding on the leaves. So if the insect is uh, feeding on the leaves, then we can suspect it to be a pest that feeds on our plant. So if they are not, then it can be a non-pest or beneficial insect or a predator or a parasitoids. Right, parasitoids is a parasite to our pest. All right. So, how do we identify whether it's a predator, parasitoids, or just a beneficial insect, or just a foreigner like a visit, uh, visiting pest, did nothing to the to the plant? So, how do we uh, actually know is we have to put in the pest, and then we have to incubate it together with our uh, predators or or parasitoids. Right. For parasitoid, we usually collect those uh, larvae that look very abnormal. For example, some uh, normal uh, caterpillar look greenish, but the parasitized uh, caterpillar usually look darker in color. Maybe it turns uh, paler, uh, dark brown like that, or it goes to uh, dark green, and then they will move, their movement is very inactive and slow. So from there, we collect that kind of insect and then we put into the what we call the insect zoo. Then we wait for the uh, parasitoid to hatch. So from there, then we know that this is a parasitoid. 
it's easy. For as for predators, we might need to collect them, unharm, alright, then we put into the container with the pest and see whether they fit on the pest or not. If they are they fit on the pest, then they are predators. Alright, one of the very good examples of predators is a uh, dragonfly. You can actually try it at home, you can put a uh, mosquito and dragonfly. Dragonfly will fit on the mosquito. But uh, if you want to crack, collect uh, this uh, dragonfly, you will need a sweep net, which I doesn't have it today. So you have to have a sweep net, so you can sweep around nearby to a pond area. Then you can possibly get a number of uh, dragonflies. So now we will see the how to collect the insect. So after examining all the plants, so we find uh, this insect, which is a possible uh, pest on uh, this uh, Rasika rapa, which is what we know as the choy sam plant, vegetable, okay? So, if we want to find out whether this insect is a pest or not, we will just pluck out the whole leaves, alright, put into the container, alright? So we will note all the holes on the plant and see uh, whether this insect has been feeding on the plant or not. So after that, we will just close up this container. So, uh, for insect, the container we don't have to plug holes because they will have sufficient air in the container. Every morning we just have to open it once and let the refreshed air to go in. Okay. Another thing to note is this container should not be directly exposing to the sunlight, which is like currently. So if we expose it to the sunlight, the the uh, the, the air inside, the enclosed air inside will heat up. And when it heat up, uh, the insect will die because as the body of the insect is smaller, so they, they will feel more heat than our body. All right, so now I'll show you a sample of uh, this uh, insect that I have collected. Okay, so you can see this insect collected earlier at different time period. So you can actually see the dry leaves, which is uh, the leaves that provided to him earlier. And today we actually put in new leaves, so so in order for him to uh, uh, feed on them, and then we will observe it. So as you can see, this is a hemitheron uh, insect which have a sucking mandible. So what we want to observe here is the drying of the leaves. So we will put in, and then after that we will observe and see whether it will feed on the leaves or not. So every morning we will open up slightly just to examine oh, whether the leaves has been uh, uh, he has been feeding on the leaves or he is not feeding on the leaves so the bad practice here is because uh, currently it's very hot so you can see all the water vapor forming so this is recommended if you have these kind of cases open up the container let the cold air go in and it will clear up the vapor slowly right so if you are in a car you have a car icon you can try to blow car icon into it, it will solve the problem faster. Alright, so I have another one here, which is a bigger insect. So we are also uh, examining whether it's a pest or a predator. Alright, so you can see another pest here. This is a Tree beetle, all right. So from doing this insect zoo, after examining, you after you observe every day, and then you will be able to know that whether it's a the insect is a pest or a predator. So the insect that visited your your field, there might be a uh, a lot a lot of insect that visited your field. Some are really doing no harm at all and no benefit at all. Some is uh, feeding and some is actually feeding on your pest which actually uh, tells uh, you that uh, having a lot of insect in your field doesn't mean that you really have to worry about they feeding on your, you know, your vegetable sometimes it's uh, not necessarily feeding on your vegetable but feeding on the insect that feeding on your vegetable which already help you to control which is uh, what we call the uh, free control all right okay 
so as for now, uh, you already know uh, basically what is uh, this uh, insect zoo about. So, what, why, why is it important for insect zoo? Is because after we identified that not all pests is a uh, uh, bad insect, uh, not all insects are pests, and also not all uh, uh, this insect that visited our field is doing harm to our vegetable. So, by knowing this, we we can decide. Uh, whether or not we do chemical control on our field. So if we are having good insect controlling uh, the pests or the damages for free, so which means that uh, we do not have to spend money to buy all the chemicals which is harmful to uh, our health also and it's also expensive to spray our field just because we want to keep out all the insects. Because sometimes after you spray and then you chase away all the predators, you will, in the end, you will have more pests than before you spray, because there is no natural control, and chemical control and us we cannot be twenty four hours in the field, but these natural predators and parasitoids, they can always be in the field, and helping us day and night to keep all the pests in check. All right. So this is the agroecology that we are talking about, and this will be hope. This is how uh, the organic farmers uh, make use of this ecology to control their pests without spraying. Therefore, uh, I hope that you can actually try this out at home. And then, if you have a home garden, I would suggest you try not to spray it, and then try to observe all these uh, beneficial insects and their presence.